Okay, we're going to continue uh, with the center wing on the H5. A lot of this is the same between the Ultra Cruiser and the H5, so a lot of this will go back and forth between the two, which is fine. I'll, I'll point out where they're different, uh, but they're the point out, uh, but they're almost the same. So in the last video you saw, Terry had shown you about the center spar in place. Um, it is in place. The rear spar is in place. Uh, the, the um, spar attach fittings are clicked in for now. I'll go back and rivet those in. Um, these heavy plates behind are already clicked in. Everything's bolted in place. Uh, everything's level and, and ready to go. So we're going to work on the um, aileron rib. The rib here that goes in the wing first. Then we're going to work our way, talk about the other ribs and the skins for the center wing uh, and how to get that done. Okay, so we'll do that next. Okay, so this is the first task um, to kind of keep working on the center wing. This is the rib, the most outboard rib. This would be on the left hand side. Um, we're gonna, so we're going to build this from the parts uh, supplied in the kit. If you're a plans builder, uh, this is called out in the plans how to do it as well. But I wanted you to see, this is a completed one, uh, ready to go in. So it's got a doubler, basically a tripler, um, two long um, support rods, then these angles as well. And then the pin goes through a bolt, and then your aileron pivot goes through, which we'll do in a later video. But I wanted you to see how this goes. This is a completed one. Um, it's pretty substantial in this area. Uh, takes some of the landing loads. Uh, this big opening here is for, of course, this is for, like we said, the aileron control. This big opening is so you can get your hand in there to, to um, bolt the landing gear on. That's what it's there for. So I'm going to show you how to put one together now. Now you've seen a complete one. I'll take uh, this one apart here that's on the bench, and I'll show you the parts that come in the kit, um, how to click it together, and how to rivet it together. One. Okay, so these are the components that you'll find um, when we're building up this aileron rib uh, for the center section. So it's a standard rib. Um, in this case, we're doing the uh, we're doing the right side, so the flanges point inward. So this is the right side, and the flanges point inward. So we've got a standard rib. Uh, we've got the the first doubler, the big one. We've got the second doubler, um, and you'll notice on these there's a notch um, in the kit parts. Um, it does mention it on the plans, but that's why we're doing this, to help you see some things. So make sure that these notches are in there, and you'll see why here in a split second. So those go on top of each other. Uh, when these come in the kit, all these holes are already in there, so it all matches up. And then you've got two um, rails and then two aileron angles, and the holes are all in this stuff um, as well. So the first thing you're going to need to do, set those aside. You're going to take your rib, now these holes are already in here because we set this up um, earlier today, but uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your rib, okay, it's just a standard rib, and you're going to take the first doubler, second doubler, you line up the holes, and you get it lined up nice on the rib, you line this up flush with the front, and make sure it doesn't stick past. Um, when you set this up you want to make real careful that it doesn't stick past the top of the rib or the bottom because it'll push on the skin. Now the holes are already in these two pieces so make sure you line those up. Take a minute and punch a hole in the rib when you like where it is. Okay, so we've already got those in so let's go ahead and click that in place there. Okay, So we've got, um, got that in. So then we're going to make sure it's square. We're going to set it up like we like it. We're going to get this all Okay. Then you go and drill all these rivets, or all these holes in the rib. Okay. So since these are already in here, I'll just kind of show you how it goes together. So all these holes are now in the rib because we just did it. And make sure you take everything apart as you're going and deburr all the holes. So these little flanges, make sure they're obviously this way. So you've got the right hand and the left hand stuff as it should be. So the rib flange goes inbound, inboard I should say, and then these go outboard. Okay. So we've got that um, kind of click put together. Okay. All the holes are in the rest of this stuff as well. So um, this angle piece, okay, the holes are already here. 
it mounts in there. Now you can see why the notches are there. This lays in this space. Okay. And then um, these pieces, yeah, these pieces go on uh, as well. And these go back to the uh, back to the main spar. Okay, so you can kind of visualize. You've got a rib sitting in here. We're going to have this bracket. Then we're going to have this bracket. And then this attaches right here to the main spar, just like this face. So this is kind of how it, how it looks. And there's some pictures in the plans uh, and in the manual how to do that. Okay. So an important thing to do is when you've got this kind of clico together, it looks like you understand how it goes. This is the bottom one. Okay. So we want to go ahead and take clico the bottom together. Okay, so we've got four rivet holes and then a big hole here that's going to be the pivot for the aileron. Okay. So this ends up in this location right here. Okay. But before you do anything here, you really need to rivet this in place because you can't get to it because the next one will be right above it and you can't get in there. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take our, our AVEX, AVEX rivets. Okay. We want to rivet this way. Okay, so we want to rivet down on the bottom one. Uh, we don't want the rivet head to stick up in the way. Okay. So you go ahead and you rivet those four. Once that's riveted, I'm not going to do it here for this example, but once that's riveted, we're going to put this in place. The holes already exist in the part here. Okay, so we're going to get that in place. Snaps in really nice and tight. And you can kind of see how that sort of, this should be on the same plane if I kind of look like that, so it attaches to the wing spar. Okay. So, again, rivet these four now before you do anything else. Okay. And we've got this top one, which is basically mirror image, right? So it goes this way, flange goes towards the spar again. Okay. So again, we've got these four. So we're going to click all this together. Okay. And this is going to end up in here. So we're going to rivet these four rivets again before we install it. Okay. So I'm going to put this whole thing together here just to kind of show you. Okay. So we would have rivets in this piece. This piece would also have rivets at this point in these four, on the top and the bottom. Okay. And this other one goes in. And once you kind of get this all started, go ahead and put enough clecos to really, really hold everything nice and straight. Okay, so there's our cleco assembly. Now, when you're doing it, as I said, these four rivets would be going this way. These four rivets would be going that way. So there's there's no interference in here. Okay, so that's how it should look. Take a minute, make sure this is flush, which it is, and this is down a little bit from the edge. You don't want it to stick up. And if it does stick up a little bit, sand it, file it, whatever you need to do, because you don't want that to rub on the skin. Okay? So you kind of get to this point, okay? and once you're at this point, feel free to rivet the whole thing. So we're going to use AVEX rivets everywhere. Okay? These holes that you see here, I'll show you where these come from in a second, They won't, you wouldn't have done these yet. Okay? So you'll have these, all the rivets around the perimeter, and then these rivets, and even the rivets through here. Um, there's some extra holes here. Um, those don't go anywhere. They're just there because then we can use the same part. We don't have to have different parts for an upper and a lower. Uh, they're just they're just there for tooling holes. Since these are already used, 
uh, in this plate. So we have all these extra plates on here for strength and also because, as you know, the rib has these lightning holes and there'd be nothing to attach to. Okay, so uh, this is for strength for the ailerons, but it also carries some landing loads um, in the airplane too. Okay, so I'll take a finished one over and I'll show you how to put it in the center wing next. One. Okay, so we're back over here. Here's that rib that we click it together on the bench. You know, if you want to click it in place before you drill anything, probably not a bad idea, just to make sure everything lines up. On um, newer kits, you'll find these holes are already, are already in there for these uh, arms. If you have an older kit, they may not be there. Or if of course your plan's building, they probably will not be there as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our rib, and the rib goes on the inside of this, of this doubler angle. So we're going to set our rib in there. We're going to take a Clico. And again, with a kit, these holes are already going to be here. We come through. We come through and we pick up. Pick up the, the uh, hole that's already in the front of the rib. Come down, maybe get a second one here. Okay. So that cleat goes that in place. Okay. And you'll see these angles purposely stopped short when you were putting it together on the bench so they don't interfere with this angle. Okay. So those are there. Now it's really important um, your spar will come with these uh, six holes. You're going to want to take a drill and drill through the rib. These holes are already in here, but you're going to drill through the rib to pick this up. Okay. So you'll end up with rivets across the front. You'll end up with these holes here as well. Gives us some extra strength. Okay. And then these arms, these aileron arms right here. Get a right here, better view here. There you go. So these aileron arms or brackets or angles attached to the spar. Like I said, if you have a newer kit, these holes are already in there. So you just line them up and put the cleat holes in it. You can do that at the top and the bottom. I would get enough cleat so you can hold everything square. Okay. So now you've got the aileron rib in place. Um, you have all these are here. These are riveted. These are here. You've drilled these holes, deburred everything. Okay. Take it apart. Make sure everything is deburred and cleaned out. And then you can run Avex rivets through everything. Okay. So you're gonna have Avex rivets through these. Um, don't put the front ones in yet because the nose rib goes there. You're going to do those at the same time. But you can go ahead and do these and that'll hold the rib in place. Um, and then when the nose rib goes in, you can do these ribs. But this can be completed at this at this point as far as the aileron attachment part. Okay, so you're going to do that on this rib, uh, this side, and you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so that's kind of the first step. Uh, when you're starting the center wing skin. Okay, so the next thing you need to do on the center wing is make two of these step ribs. So they're going to be on the left side of the airplane, so you have to use a left uh, left rib. This is the left one. The flanges are inboard. So this is the page of the plans you're looking at, sheet number five. You've got to make two of these. So we're going to set the rib on there. In your kit you'll find these step stiffeners. There'll be two sets of them. Um, so the distance shows four inches here. You can be somewhat reasonably close to that. In fact, if you want to just use the plans and look right through the picture and get them kind of where they need to be, the placement is not real critical. Um, the important thing is they don't stick past the bottom of the rib and they don't stick past the top because you don't want them to hit the skin. So if you get the bottom one in place, go ahead and drill it. And some of these are drilled already. Go ahead and drill it. Put a click on in. Nice thing to do is to make sure they're nice and perpendicular. Use a straight edge or I mean a 90 degree square or something. Get that nice and perpendicular. Get all four of them in place. 
Again, the positioning is not super critical. You can kind of see we're pretty much in line with what's on the on the plan sheet, and that's close enough. So we're gonna get these in. The holes already come in this part, so you just need to transfer them into the rib. Go ahead and take your time and get all the clicos in. Make sure it's nice and straight, nice and perpendicular, and deburr everything first. And then once it's deburred, take it apart. And then you can use the Apex rivets. Now in this particular case, it's easier to rivet from this side because the, you can get the rivet head uh, of the tool in there and it's perfectly fine to do that um, from this side. So when you get done, you'll end up with two of these. Uh, these are called the step ribs and they go on the left side. Um, so when you um, step on the wing, these are pretty stiff as you can tell when you build it. So they don't deflect too much when you're stepping on the wing uh, to get an airplane. So two of these and these only go on the left hand side. So the next step will show you where these go and we'll show you how to start skinning uh, the center wing kit. Okay, so to put the center wing together, you've got the spar already set in the aircraft. You've got the spar already set in the aircraft. The rear spar is going to be sticking out because it's already cleaned it in. You already kind of did all that kind of work. So I take this bottom skin. It's the one with the lip in it. Okay, the ribs can be in here, not in here, whatever you want to do. Slide the skin so the spar nests inside of this edge. Slide it in. You'll find that there is a hole already um, in this spar. This outer hole in newer kits will be in the rear spar and in the skin. Okay, so you can kind of put that in. And then go underneath and click o the skin into the bottom spar right here in a couple spots to kind of get it somewhat held in place. Then we're going to click o in this rib we built on the bench, remember this aileron rib, with a nose rib. And the nose rib needs to be uh, notched out. If it's not from the kit already, make sure you notch it to clear this. Okay. Then a standard rib. And then we've got the two step ribs we built in the previous step. Um, it's got the su supports here. When we step on the wing, it gives us a little extra strength. Okay. We've got the inside rib. I like to turn this rib the opposite direction only because it makes it easier to reach in when you when you rib it. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can leave it the other way. It doesn't matter. Uh, I like to turn around the other way. It's just a preference. It doesn't make a difference. So when you put this all together, it's a good idea to label A, B, C, D, E and label all the ribs because when you put the skins on and you drill all the holes, you want to put everything back where it was. Um, so it's a good idea to label absolutely everything. So you can see the holes are already in these because we've already had the parts together. We took it apart just so you can see how it goes. Um, you see the line down the, down the ribs. You can see the lines down the ribs. Okay, and the holes. And again, that's how you line things up. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Uh, you get the bottom skin on first. Don't rivet anything at this point. Just click it in place. Move the ribs so they line up through the holes, punch them in, click on it. Right. So the idea is you get the bottom skin, click it on, okay. and then we're going to set the, the top skin in place, okay. and then we're going to set the nose skin in place. We're going to click on, drill and click on everything in place before we put a single rivet. The entire thing needs to be click in place. Okay. Okay. So this is the center wing top skin, the left hand side. If you get a kit part, it's already got this cut in it, it's already trimmed, and it should be pretty close to the aircraft. But what you can do to trim it, uh, the spar holes are an inch apart. These are an inch spacing. So what we can do, we could set the skin in place, maybe move out two or three inches, put a click go in place, and then take a straight edge and measure out that same distance and put a bunch of marks to get the trim line. Okay? So we ultimately want to do is get this trimmed up about like that. Okay? There should be a little gap between 
the skin and the fuselage. You don't need much. Enough so it doesn't rub. Okay? And you don't want a whole lot. There is a fairing that goes here. Right? But you want to maintain a pretty good edge distance with the rivet. Okay? So once you kind of get that trimmed and cleaned up and deburred, okay? then you go ahead and Clico, temporarily anyway, Clico this top skin onto the spar. And again, in a kit, all these holes are going to be in these pieces. Okay? So we get that Clico in place. We can come to the back, maybe put a squeeze clamp or something here temporarily. And again, that first hole, that first hole that we talked about, this alignment hole, is in everything. So you can go ahead and put a Clico in that one. Okay. So kind of maybe some squeeze clamps here or there. And then line up all the ribs again, like we were doing uh, with the red line. Right, look through, um, look through the rib. Line them up and then drill them. Okay? It's always best to work towards an end of a sheet. So if we've got the spar rib uh, click in place here, okay, we want to work our way towards the back. Okay? So work our way down the rib so we don't end up with a pucker. Okay? Does that make sense? So we're going to do that. So we've got the bottom click in place, we've got the top click in place. Okay. And then we're going to put the no skin in place next. Okay. Okay, so we've got bottom skin, top skin, click in place. Um, I've just got a couple of clicos just to show you, but you have pretty much all the clicos in at this point. So this skin comes pre-formed um, from the factory if you've got a kit. And it's again notched and trimmed pretty close to shape, but again, you might have to trim it. So the same thing applies when you put the skin on. Okay. If you hold it back a few inches and mark to the fuselage, um, so you get a good fit. So kind of like we did with the other skins, we want to do, we want to click go, click the skin in place. those at least to get it started. So we get this click out and I would go ahead and since these are uh, factory holes, go ahead and I'll do that for you now. We put a good number of clicos in this to hold everything nice and straight. Okay, so we've got a few clicos in here to hold it again. You probably want to put a lot if you have enough clicos to do it. So the next step we're going to do, we're going to make sure we have clearance here at the front, okay? And we do, that looks pretty good, that's a pretty good gap. If we didn't, we'd want to trim that, okay? So now we're going to come underneath, I'm not going to climb under there, but I'll just tell you what to do. We're going to come underneath, we're going to pull this skin back, and we're going to clico the rear edge to the spar, okay? We're not worried too much about where the ribs are at this point. We want to get that clico in place, okay? Once that's clico in place, we come back through our alignment holes in the top, just like we did before. And you can kind of see that some of these uh, holes are already in place. Um, we line up our, our holes uh, in the window. And we go ahead and we start click on everything. Again, we want to work towards the front of the nose in this particular case. And at the bottom, we work from the spar forward. So it pushes any material we might have up into the nose um, to take it up. Okay. This skin is going to fit quite tight on purpose against these ribs. There won't be any much motion in here. Um, this takes care of a lot of the torsion and the wing holds a lot of force. Okay. So you get all that clico together, the entire wing. Okay. And then once you're clico together, um, you've got your setup you had, whatever you had set up, straight edge your clamps, whatever you had. You'll find this gets so stiff you won't be able to do much adjustment anyway. Make sure you get everything clean in place, make sure it's how you want it. Take it all the way apart again, <laughs> clean it, divert it, make sure there's no chips in anything, rivet uh, or click everything back together uh, and, and go to town and get it riveted. One thing to remember when you've got the skins off, make sure you rivet all the spars in place first. Okay. So you rivet all this stuff, Rivet all the spars to the web. 
before you put the skins back on. It says that in the instructions, but be sure you do it. Okay? Because once you kind of do this, you gotta take it off again, that would be a big hassle. Okay? So you get that all clean coat in in place and all nice and straight. Um, and then you start riveting. Again, rivet the spar first, and then take out maybe every other Clico um, and then start, start riveting. Okay. One thing I didn't mention, um, just because I don't have it here in front of me, but um, this wing, uh, there's a step plate that goes on here, and it goes on top. So um, you'll see that in one of the next shots um, after that. So that's kind of how you get the center wing together, and just get the skins and the ribs on. So we've got the center wing assembly all clicked together. We already verified that uh, this was parallel to the back. We verified this is perpendicular to the side rails. Everything is straight, um, as you saw in the previous videos. This whole entire thing is clicked together, and it, it's so rigid at this point, it's really not going to move around. So as long as you keep all the clicks in it, uh, when you get ready to rivet, it'll stay put. Okay? Uh, order of riveting um, it's kind of up to you. What I usually like to do is I like to do the main spar first okay? and then um, take about every other rivet out and kind of work your way through. Uh, everything uh, is built with the AVEX rivets and the special puller head. Okay? So as long as you leave a lot of clicks in and it's not going to move around on you. Um, so you're going to do all the riveting um, that you can do from this point and finish up the uh, finish up the build. Okay, so that's what it looks like before you rivet. Um, and again, you want to leave as many clicks in as possible. In fact, you could even add more than that. One thing I want to point out is um, I kept a couple of these. I want you to see. Uh, we talked about drilling holes and lining things up. And so on the ribs, as we talked about earlier, you've got a red line in the middle of the rib. So basically, to get it lined up, you move the rib in and out by hand until you see the red line come into view. I'm pulling the rib with my hand, see? It comes into view, you hold it down, you drill and you punch and you put a cleco in there. And that's how you keep those ribs nice and straight. You do that everywhere all the way across and that's how you make a nice straight fuselage. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the aileron attachment differences between the H5 and the Ultra Cruiser. Uh, you saw in the previous uh, little section building this aileron rib. So this is an H5. Um, in the H5, the control stick is behind the spar, which puts the aileron assembly behind the spar like this. Okay, this is what it looks like when we get going. Over here, you can see there's an Ultra Cruiser. Okay, looks similar. You've got the doublers and the tripler on the Ultra Cruiser, just like we did on the H5. We've got a hole here to reach through to attach the landing gear, just like on the H5. Except the difference is the angles and the aileron doubler pieces are in front of the spar on the Ultra Cruiser. Okay, so it's in front. Um, so otherwise, the build process is about the same, but the Ultra Cruiser is in the front. And I wanted you to see the difference between the two. And again, this is the H5 in the back. Okay, so when you get all done, this is what the center wing um, should look like. Uh, everything's riveted. Um, when you get to this point, um, don't rivet this back line of rivets quite yet. You need to wait on that. Uh, whether it's an Ultra Cruiser or an H5, you need to wait because the um, trailing edge for the Ultra Cruiser, the trailing edge goes under the skin and if you're doing an H5 you're going to put a flap on here which will be one of the next videos we'll look at later um, it's a good idea just to leave this clean coat for now and then we'll come back to it so you can see everything's in place <clears throat> everything's riveted permanently um, the wing was straight we made sure there was no twist as we talked about before um, so this is perpendicular up and down parallel to the side rails this back um, pick up point, also parallel, take the straight edge across and measure and keep everything straight when you rivet it and everything will stay straight. So that's what we're going to end up with on both sides. Um, so that's the center wing.